This is Lesson 102, VHDL Example 69. And in this example, we'll talk about distributed RAM and distributed ROM. Now, you remember what the architecture of the Spartan 3E looked like. Here's the CLB. Remember, each CLB has four slices, and each slice has two lookup tables. Now, these lookup tables are what we've been using to create our combinational logic. Remember they're 16 by 1 RAMs, which means they have a 4-bit input and one output. Well, these 4-bit inputs to the lookup table can be used as addresses, and you can actually store data in these lookup tables so they behave like RAMs, or in this case ROMs, where you store fixed values in there. This is called distributed RAM, and in the table that we had in an earlier lesson, this distributed RAM bits are listed for the various parts, for the Spartan 3 parts, and for the Spartan 2 board, the 500K one, for example, has 73K uh, bits of distributed RAM that you can use. Uh, this corresponds to uh, over 9300 bytes of of RAM. So you would use distributed RAM when you needed more uh, bits. Uh, in the last example, you remember we made a, uh, an 8-element RAM just by writing a BHDL program and storing the constants in them. For distributed RAM, uh, you would use distributed RAM, for example, if you needed more. Uh, there's also block RAM, as you see here. We'll talk about block ROM and block RAM in the next lesson. Now the way you use the distributed RAM is with the core generator. And to get to the core generator uh, in your active HDL you click on tools and then you click on core gen and architecture wizard. And this brings up uh, this uh, window and you click on run core generator. This core generator is going to generate hardware that you then add to your project. This is hardware where you don't write the VHDL program, you actually create a little component module that is created by this core generator. You can select project, project options up here, and this window will, you click on the memories and storage elements, then click on RAMs and ROMs, and then you want to select distributed memory here. And then you could click on customize and for example for the Nexus 2 board you would in this pull down menu select Spartan 3E. You want to select for the device the XC3S500E if that's the part you have and then for the package would be FG320. For other parts, you can see Appendix D in the book. In this window, you would type in a component name. We'll call it DistROM16. And we'll have 16 values. That turns out to be the minimum that you can use. And so we'll make a depth of 16. The range can go from 16 to 65,536, you see. And the data width is 8. That is, we'll have 8-bit bytes in each of these 16 memory locations. We'll click on ROM because we want to make this a ROM. You can also have a, a single port RAM or a dual port RAM. You click Next twice. That'll take you to uh, this window and you click on Browse and you're going to find a COE file that you've previously made and then you'll click Finish. The COE file is going to contain the uh, values that you want to store in your ROM. Uh, you write it this way. This is, a con this is a comment here with a semicolon. You say memory initialization radix equals 16. That is, these are hex values. And then memory initialization vector equals, and you simply list the 16 bytes in hex and end it with a semicolon. So that's the COE file. When you finish, you'll actually generate uh, a number of files. The first two, the EDN and the MIF, 
you must copy and paste those into the source directory of your project. Uh, they will be in a Xi in a uh, uh, in a Xilinx uh, uh, core. You'll, you'll see an X core for this core gen uh, folder. That's where you'll find them. So you need to copy and paste those into your source directory. The VHD file, you'll need to add that to your project and compile it. This will allow you to simulate uh, this uh, distributed ROM that you've made. And then this VHO file is very convenient. It contains a component declaration template as well as a port map template that you can cut and paste into your top level design. After you've generated this, you click Exit, and that'll take you out of the core generator. So this is a simulation of that distributed ROM. It has an address A and an output SP0. These are names that they give you. So for example, in the component declaration, these will be the names, and in the port map, these will be the uh, names of the components on the left-hand side. So if you just make the binary counter go from 0 to F, then these uh, will be the values that were in your COE file that are stored now in the ROM. Well, to test this, we can make a top-level design. We'll use the same one we used to test the ROM in the last lesson, this ROM 8. Just replace this ROM 8 with the distributed ROM 16 that you just made with the core generator and just change this counter to a 4-bit counter by changing n to a 4. That will give you an address 3 down to 0 coming out. Uh, otherwise you can uh, run this exactly the same. You'll now push the button 16 times and go through all 16 values of the uh, uh, GCD algorithm. Well here's the uh, top-level design in VHDL. This is the usual entity and the usual signals. Everything is the same as the last example. Clock div, debounce, clock pulse. We just port map those the same way. GCD3 is the same. X7 seg BC is the same. Just change the counter. Make this n equals 4. Now you have a 4-bit counter. And this distributed ROM, uh, this port map statement, you can cut and paste from that uh, VCO file that was created in the core gen. And so the address A, you just connect to your address, and the output SP0, you'll connect to your uh, M, 7 down to 0.